Students, welcome to Shorosa's classes. In this video, I will be solving microeconomics questions from the economics honors model papers. So the first question we have, assume that the demand function takes the following form. They have given Q equal to 50 minus 2P. We have to find the price elasticities of the demand at P equal to 10 and at P equal to 20. And justify the elasticity cannot be inferred by the slope alone. So let's get into this. So Q equal to 50 minus 2P. So dq dp equal to minus 2. So here if you put p equal to 10, q equal to 50 minus 20, that is 30. And at p equal to 20, q equal to 50 minus 40, that is 10. So elasticity at p equal to 10, it is dq by dp minus 2 into p by q. So that is 10 by 30. So you can say it this is minus 2 by 3. And a equal to p equal to uh, 20 is... Uh, again minus 2 and this time it will be 20 by 10 which is simply minus 2 so the price elasticities are like this this thing is less than structure and this one is a greater than 1 okay so next question is The flatter the demand curve, the greater the price elasticity of demand. So here, what is the structure? For example, the demand curve is P equal to A minus BQ. Okay. So uh, this is the format here. Uh, and uh, or you can also write it Q equal to A minus BP. That will be uh, relatively easier. So flatter means slope is falling. Flatter means slope is increasing and here B is the slope coefficient. So the B value is falling. So if you just do dq dp, this is only minus B. If this value is falling, this B value itself is falling. Let's see what happens. Now E is dq by dp into P by Q. So here dq by dp is giving you minus b and p by q is unchanging. So this value is falling. So ultimately it's b is falling and there is a minus sign. So opposite thing will happen. So the elasticity value will increase. So this statement is a true statement. Now here we have a table. Uh, of the quantity q equal to zero so if the quantity is increasing you can see the price is decreasing so calculate the elasticity of demand so you can take any two points uh, and change it like this so i'm taking this area and actually every time it will be changing so i'm doing it here only e equal to dq by dp into p by q so dq by dp here is so here we can calculate this so the first case it won't be there because because before this there is no quantity the second case is 4 minus 6 by 10 minus 0 4 minus 6 by 10 minus uh, 0 divided by the previous price that is 6 into the previous quantity 0 so in this case 0 is there so this is infinite Okay, next is 2 to 4, 2 minus 4, 20 minus 10 into previous price, that is 4 and previous quantity, that is 10. So this is minus 2 by 10 into 4 by 10. So it is minus 8 by 100, so minus 0 0.08. Last one in that way you can calculate this one as well. 22 minus 2. This is there is no price change, so anyway, this will be uh, 0. Okay, so that's it for this uh, question. After plotting the demand curve from the calculation, explain the relationship between elasticity of demand and the demand curve. So you can plot the demand curve uh, directly here so i'm plotting it so quantity zero when the this is the price quantity format this is the price measured in the vertical axis quantity in the horizontal axis 
when price is 6 that is too high no one is purchasing so that is 6 when price is reduced to 4 quantity is 10 when price reduced to 2 quantity is 20 doubled and when price remains at 2 it increases again so 30 so this is the first point this with this this is the very first point on the demand curve then uh, 4 with 10 this is the second point then 2 with 20 third point and then this point so this is the demand curve so we have a kink at p equal to 2 so with respect to the elasticity values you can compare every time so when this is extreme the infinite this is infinite and whenever we are coming down we can see that the valuation is ultimately minus 0 0.08 then it is zero so ultimately it's falling okay now uh, we will go to the next question we are going to the now we are going to the next question here is a labor supply function so labor function is uh, we know at equilibrium labor supply equal to labor demand so we can actually write it like uh, from the first equation labor supply is w labor demand itself is 100 minus w so w itself is 50 so equilibrium wage rate is 50 units and employment at this particular level is that is a labor demand 100 minus w that is 50 units quite a direct question but uh, there is a second part to this question where they are asking suppose that there's a minimum wage in the market and in general minimum wage structure is not equal to the equilibrium wage what will happen to the employment if the minimum wage was 70 and 30 so for this i need to get back to the main question again So if you go to the main question in the main framework, you can see WLS of so 70 and 30. Okay, so 70 and uh, 30. So wages, they are changing as W equal to 70 and W equal to 30. So when a labor demand in that case, 100 minus 70, obviously will fall as wages are high. No market is want to employ more people. So there will be unemployment. So how many people will be unemployed with respect to the equilibrium position 50 minus 30 so 20 units of people remember that this is not 20 directly it may be thousand million crores even okay now in the second case where the labor demand will be high because of lower wage rate that is 70 units so there will be 20 jobs extra will be created than the market uh, requirement over market requirement we can say over market requirement there will be 20 new jobs so if wage rate falls below the equilibrium then there will be dearth of people and if the wage rate is above equilibrium there will be high amount of unemployment in the market so very much basic economic law has been applied in the light of your answer explain the portable effect of the imposition of the minimum wages on the employment of the unskilled labor in india so i've explained this part as well already so next question is there's a demand uh, there is supply curves for a good uh, for goods for a good is given by the quantities uh, plot the demand and supply curves in the market and clearing price as well so remember that the market clearing price is nothing but where demand meets supply so that is qd equal to qs which is also called the equilibrium point so qd equal to qs so 400 minus 50p equal to 25 plus 25 by 2p remember that is 12.5 i've written like this so this time it will be 375 plus 50 plus 25 by 2p so this is 62.5 p so this portion is 62.5 p and uh, after division you will get it as 6 over here at p equal to 6 uh, quantity demanded is 400 minus 5 15 to 6 that is 300 so 100 units so we just draw the two diagrams 
remember that it won't pass through origin okay the supply curve is like this this is the supply this is the demand and these are the two equilibrium points here price equal to six and here it is 100 units now let's take a look into the next question here in question number 11 suppose that the government creates a price ceiling that is a maximum price level which is in general two units below uh, in some units below the equilibrium price here it is two units uh, below what will be the new market quantity okay so remember that here new price they are allowing as only four so put p equal to four if you put p equal to four over here then the quantity demanded will be 50 minus 4 200 obviously that will be higher and quantity supplied is 25 plus 12.5 into 4 so that is 50 this is 75 so obviously quantity supplied will fall and quantity demanded will increase and uh, there is a lack of supply in the market by 125 units so due to this you know over time price level will increase because most of the people who are in desperate need of the things will try to get their things by paying more so obviously eventually this market price which has four has been fixed by the government will increase and give birth to the black market structure as well what happens to the market price and quantity if the government replaces the price ceiling to the higher price floor that is one unit above i'm keeping it as a homework remember that p equal to six so if you just put equal to seven obviously then quantity demanded will be less than quantity supplied okay and uh, there will be a big problem in the market just the same way you can have structurally calculate the difference between these two as well in the next video i will explain more questions like this till that you can ask any of the questions in the given number